All right, hey guys. <clears throat> Today what I got going on here is I've got a Remington 700 barrel. This is a just an average, you know, could be any barrel, but this is a varmint barrel and today, or a tactical, I think, whatever you want to call it. Today what I'm going to do is throw this um, 5 Ace 24, I'm going to thread the end of the barrel for 5 Ace 24, so for a muzzle break. And this is just a thread protector, so I'm going to use this for, um, just for kind of a guide on my threads. First thing I got to do, um, I've done a lot of muzzle breaks. When I used to work um, in a gunsmith shop, I did, I don't know, five or six of these a week for a couple of years. And uh, anyways, so what we got going on here is I got our barrel indicated at the fore jaw and then it's on the spider on the outside. And then I dialed it in to within two or three ten thousandths of an inch um, with my indicating rod here. So it's running pretty, and this is a rod I made, and it's perfect, fits perfectly in there. So, um, so we're running pretty damn true. Um, two ten thousandths is pretty good. I mean, I could have nitpicked my way down a little, little more, but um, in all reality, in my opinion, it's not going to matter much once you get past there. Um, and then most of the barrels that I've done, we usually go out to about a half an inch. And um, I haven't done a, the shop I used to work in, we did pretty much like varmint breaks and some directional hunting breaks that got timed. But I'm just going to do this for um, any break. So half inch is good enough um, for what we're doing here. And then this is going to be a 5 ace 24 thread. So the major diameter is 0.625 inches, and I don't have, uh, I'm working on getting my one inch caliper here, but uh, we're sitting at 857. So we got to get down to 625, so we got to take off about 200 thousandths. So we'll get whacking away here, and I'm going to check my make sure my thing is geared right and um, the thing with these Remington, Remington barrels are notorious for this when you um, indicate your bore most of the time the uh, outside of the barrel will not be anywhere close to true and Remington's are really bad for that So if, you're, if the outside of your barrel isn't uh, true, don't worry about it. I'm going to back out a little bit. That's a pretty heavy cut. Actually, most barrels, not just Remington's, are, are like that. And I'm not going to ride right up to my cut there, so I'll call that good. I don't have a digital readout or anything on this guy, so I'm just going to take a few heavy cuts and get up to my end there and then we'll come back and come back and set our depth on our our final shoulder cut. So I'm just cutting this by hand. Could run your uh, Par feet if you want, but and could run run some oil, but for the purpose of uh, showing you guys what I'm doing here, I'm not gonna run oil. cleaning that shoulder up a little bit.
624 right on the nuts. Let's see, we'll call that good. 625, 624, one, one thousandth of an inch isn't going to matter here because you usually end up flattening those threads out anyway. So, all right, next thing we're going to do is we'll take a switch our bits out here and we'll take a for the purpose of uh, this threading, we're gonna take a little relief cut here. So I'm gonna, I gotta sharpen a bit here and then we'll continue. All right, so I got a little uh, back cutting bit here. You could use a um, parting tool, but I don't have a parting tool um, that's thin enough for this guy, so I made one. And what we're gonna do, first off, I'm gonna slow my lathe down a little bit because this guy doesn't like cutting fast speed for some reason. My lathe is kind of picky. Um, but so what we're going to do here is we're going to make a back cut for our thread so we got a stopping point and uh, the minor diameter of our 5 8 24 threads are approximately 0.578 so <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll come in here and uh, I'm at 625 now so I'm gonna do my math quick so 625 minus 578. So I got to go approximately 0 0.047 inches to get to my minor diameter. And for good measure, we're just going to go 0 0.05. So crank our lathe up here. And I'm just going to clean this shoulder up a little bit here with this guy. It's going to be a pretty heavy cut on this little bit, so I'm going to go really slow. And once I see I start cutting, I'm going to read my dial here and then go another... I'm actually going to slow my lathe down a little bit more because this bit... Uh, this bit is kind of... I'm going to put my back gear in. I'll smack this bit if I don't. I'm going to slow life down a little bit here for a minute. Put some oil on there. So zero my cross dial out. And I broke it. So I'm going to have to resort to my actual uh, parting tool, which if you can see it, I'm going to straighten it up a little bit here, resharp. All right, so parting tool, a little bit, uh, take my back here out here, a little bit thicker than I want it to be, but we'll be all right. And I'm just going to run that guy up against my chuck to make sure we're nice and straight, parallel with the world. Touch that. Get on the back there. Crank her up. And then I gotta can't run the gear, can't run the lathe out of gear, so I'm gonna actually speed this guy up just a tad here. Alright. There we go. So now we're in business. So now we're gonna go 0 0.05 inches in. Or 4.7. slow it down a little bit. That's what I don't like about these larger bits, they cut a little harder, but some more grease on there. There we go. Now it's cutting a little better. So, there is a way to do this without making a back cut, which would be nice. 
you know, if you're uh, wanting it to look pretty, but in all reality, it doesn't matter. So there's thirty thousandths. Forty thousands. Right there's forty eight thousands, so I'm gonna go to fifty. And we should be able to bottom out our threads there. And I'm gonna go a few thousand more for good measure. Another four thousandths. All we're doing here is we're making sure we got enough uh, room available for our. So when we stop our threads, we're not, you know, hitting the bottom of our threads. All right. So then let me um, make a measurement here of what my depth is here. Should have did this before but we're gonna see where my how deep we're at. And we're at 40 under 42 and a half so we're gonna take another cut here. I'm gonna turn that a little bit so that I'm just gonna Clean up my shoulder. I'm gonna speed my lathe up. And I gotta put my bullpen in. another my smaller bit. Actually I'll use my parting tool. So this is just squaring up our shoulder. because I turned it. Just double check it here. And a lot of the times if you're actually fitting a particular muzzle brake, this will usually kind of be the last step you do. But being that I'm not fitting a specific brake for this guy at this time, I'm just doing the uh, standard kind of half inch. Threading. So I got to get my uh, threading bit set up and then we'll continue here in a minute. Alrighty, so I've got everything set up. Got my threading bit. I got my compound set at 29 and a half. I got my threading um, on my lathe set up to 24 threads per inch. Slowed my lathe down and we should be ready to make our first cut here. Um, to to our depth, I think our minor diameter, what did I say, five, 
578. So we're going to go, um, I'll make several passes here and then I'll kind of see, I don't know, if you don't, if you thread it long enough you can kind of get an idea just by looking at it, how close you are. So we'll make a few cuts here and we'll see, um, see where we're at. And uh, this is a 24 thread so it shouldn't matter where we hit our dial. Shot here, I gotta set my aim for enough, which I didn't do. So, this is just our first scribe cut, and that's a super scribe cut. So, I'm gonna go in, and our, our uh, dial is set at zero here. I'm gonna go in with another thousand. And then we'll recut our, our uh, scratch cut and double check our threads. I probably can't see that. No, I can't. No, I can barely see it. There we go. Now I should be able to see it. So we'll stop this guy. Wipe it off. That's a little, a little rough there. Grab my pitch gauge. Check it. And spot on, like normal. So we'll keep cutting. And I'm gonna dump a little oil on here because those cuts a little nicer. here. mention this is a 30 caliber barrel so 30 caliber we're using 5 ace 24 um, smaller ones you use smaller you can use smaller depending on what, what you're doing and what you want to use um, and then with this too um, I could have a little bit more thread on the back side here but this is going to do just fine I'm just feeding in about three, four thousandths on my uh, compound every pass here, and I'm just checking, seeing I'm getting a nice, nice cut there. Let's back in a few more. Dump a little more oil on there. Like normal threading, the deeper you get, the less of a cut you want to take. And uh, the only thing I don't like about my thread here is, well, about this setup here is I wish my uh, 
I had a little less of a back cut for my threads. I don't like that big back cut, but this will work just fine. I got, sorry, I got get rid of this rattle here. Sorry, guys. So we're getting into a little bit heavier cut. Threads are getting looking pretty good, so we'll go another couple thousandths on the dial. Little oil on there. Protector and see see where we're at. Now I'm just down to taking a two thousandths cut on my compound, and that's starting to look pretty good. So I might stop after this one. Bring it back out here, reset my dial, so I don't forget even though I'm at zero. check this guy and I think I might be pretty dang close here. So we're pretty snug but it's going on and that might be actually perfecto once I clean those up. That if you can see that guy doesn't move at all. It's completely solid. And there we go, I like that. Um, nice tight fit, everything's square. So what I'm going to do on this guy is, now that I got it to this point, I'm done threading, I'll call it good, so I can get this guy out of the way. We're going to undo our threading dial, we don't need that anymore, undo our cross slide kicker in high gear, because we're going to be doing some high gear stuff here. I'm going to get my bowl pin back in. I'm having issues here. There we go. Alright. Now, make sure i got my right file here. Some guys make a little recess cuts on the front. I don't like that. So I just come in here with a file and knock that corner off or knock that edge off um, and then I'm going to just knock this guy off just a little bit. The corner of the barrel here. Then what we're gonna do? All right, so I'm gonna come in here with a brass brush, bronze brush. Clean those up a little bit. And then I'm gonna get a piece of scotch brite. Hold it here. And that usually does a really good job of knocking the edges off of that thread. And I don't like using compressed air on this old lathe, so... Threads on there nice and smooth. 
absolutely no wobble. Nice and tight. So here we go. Now let's check it out for run out. Absolutely no run out, which is what we're looking for. So with this particular guy, being that I did it to half inch, I believe this muzzle protector is, let's see the three quarters or an inch. So it's three quarters. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna knock the edge of this muzzle brake down because I don't like to have a big recess there. So that's pretty simple, it's just turning the end, end off. Let's just spin that out quick. Turn this a little bit. And when you do this, this there's a pretty good chance that this will tighten your uh, muzzle thread protector, your muzzle brake or whatever onto your barrel pretty good, so it doesn't matter which way you cut it. Except the last pass and you usually want to cut from the inside out. Could alternatively cut this off with a parting tool. I'm getting down to close to where I want to be. So I'm going to leave a little bit of this muzzle brake sticking out from our muzzle. So I can get a, uh, let me put a different uh, cutter on here. Put my threading bit back on here. And then this way we can get a nice, uh, put our angle back on our brake. Or, I keep wanting to say brake, it's not a brake. Put a little angle back on the thread protector here. Just right on the edge. So then we got a nice little chamfer there. And that's about it guys. I mean there's not a whole hell of a lot to it. I can show you. Let me grab this camera here. Alright so there it is. There's uh, basically the finished brake. And like I said before it usually gets pretty tight down there. So let me uh, Set my camera down here. Okay, so let's uh, get this guy back off of there again. Take a little Armstrong. So here we go, taking that guy off. So here we go, that's it. I mean, I, I got some little threads stuck in there, but. Or the green stuff. But we'll uh, clean that out. our break. So we'll just slap that guy back on. So here you go guys, there's putting on a, you know it's pretty similar for a muzzle brake and then there's the uh, thread protector. 
So this guy is basically ready to go. All I'm going to do here is come in here and put some cold blue on that guy and um, send it on its way. So that's same thing for putting on a muzzle brake. I mean, it's uh, if you got a timed one, you got to time them sometimes. But if not, then you know, no big deal. So uh, there you go. You're just putting on a or threading the end of a muzzle for a muzzle brake or a thread protector, whatever you want to do. Uh, if you guys like this video, please comment, subscribe, share, like, and contribute. Till next time. Check out my other videos. There's a bunch of other videos. I got over a hundred videos on stuff that you might learn something from. If not, it's good entertainment. So, till next time. Take care. See you guys later. Take it easy.